Hi there, uh, just a quick video on um, rear diff on a um, Mark 1 TT. I had actually looked online, I couldn't see anything about this. So I thought I'd stick a quick video up. This is the old unit that came out of the car, it was whining. Um, it was whining on overrun. I disconnected the Haldex uh, controller, um, which is the loom that runs around the back here, um, and it stopped whining. So I'm guessing it was the diff. They're so cheap at the minute, the, the parts are so cheap that instead of, just, instead of messing around with that one, I just stuck a new one on it. Um, it's a reasonably straightforward process. I've just been through it. Um, so I'll run you through the, the steps now. While I'm here, over here by the diff, one thing I would mention is the um, servicing it. So the old diff, or the, sorry, the replacement new diff, I service it on the bench. So you're, you have good access to the uh, fill and drain holes on the, um, on the diff itself. Um, and then your uh, Haldex filter as well. So I did that on the bench and then stuck it in the car. To get it into the car then, you need to take the exhaust off, unfortunately. I tried to get it out with, um, with the exhaust still in place, but the back box gets in the way. Um, I did leave the heat shield on and just rashly bent it out of the road. Uh, not uh, perfect, um, but good enough for me. I didn't want to deal with these rusty fasteners and lose, potentially lose my rear exhaust hangers, so I just bent it. Um, and uh, it should hopefully bend back in place again. The the procedure itself then, so you've got um, um, two, uh, forward and a and rear mount. So forward mount is this uh, piece here. It's bolted through this side and through the other side with an M14 spline uh, type bolt. Um, it's also fixed to the diff with three um, Allen. So you actually need to remove the whole mount out of the way to allow you to drop the diff down. Access to these is a nightmare, actually. Um, it's really difficult to get a, a spine in there. So if you're doing a lot of shopping and, and finding bits, um, go for this type. Let me just show you. These, this type here. So that's not the right size. Obviously, that's a bit too small. Um, I had only um, the... Let's see if I have one here. I had only the type with kind of like the a half inch head already on it um, and you can see here I had to grind some flats on it to get it to work it worked fine um, it allowed me to get the job done but not ideal space is a pre at a premium Unfortunately, getting that those mounts out was a nightmare um, with the tools that I had but I got it done anyway the other thing then the other mounts then are these again uh, access is tight and you can see here that you've got a subframe mount just literally right above it so you have to take this out um and just be careful because that is a captive nut um if anything's going to go wrong in this job it's that snapping or it breaking the captive nut loose so i was very nervous about taking that out actually um, i couldn't see any other way to get the to get at these with the tools i had without taking that off uh, fortunately it went okay and i was able to get these um bolts out drop the whole diff out. The other thing then obviously is the drive shaft. So again, you've got um, spine bits of hoy around here um, and then on the prop shaft as well, there's spine bits, you can see uh, three of those uh, bolted to the face of the Haldex controller um, input. Um, once you've got everything disconnected, the only other things to, to think about really is the uh, Haldex controller loom, the, the wiring for that. Um, and then you've got a couple of breathers, one for the Haldex, one for the diff which go up into these rear chassis rails. Um, so make sure you, you um, disconnect those before you drop the diff down. Then it's a case of just bringing it backwards this direction and dropping it down, sticking the new one in. Um, uh, what I also needed to do as well, just as I was taking the shafts out, is just drop the um, lower um, control arms here in the rear, just to give me a little bit of wiggle room in order to allow you to get these out. These are actually a bit of a bear to separate from the, the cups here in the diff. Um, so I just, I was able to chisel them off. Um, so again, just, I think it's just a UK thing, you know, they sit here and, and they get rusty and um, everything's just a bit of a nightmare to, to take apart after 20 years. Um, I think that's it. Um, I guess I'll, I'll test it now, I'll get it all back together, get these arms back on it and uh, test it. And hopefully that does the job. Um, hopefully this was useful for you. Um, if you have any questions, just 
drop a comment down below. I'll, I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, good luck with the the, uh, the repair. Oh, one last thing I forgot to say. Um, it is doable on a driveway if you've got a mate. <laughs> if you're on your own, the diff weighs a little bit. Um, it's quite heavy. So a bit of a bench press to get it up in. Um, and aligning these um, holes here, even with the uh, a transmission jack um, and a lift. Um, I still it took me a little while. Um, I know I know the crack. I know what it's like to to try and bench press a gearbox or a diff or whatever into a car, uh, and it's no fun. So if you have a friend um, or a, or a jack and a good smooth surface, you should be able to manage it at home. Um, it's uh, it's definitely DIYable. Um, shouldn't cause you too much um, too much concern. All right. Thanks very much. Bye bye.